在飘，这雪下的正好，他们多么美妙，只有我才看到。My mom has a nickname for you. It's in Cantonese. She calls you Mong Tai Lo. Which Tai Lo in Cantonese is Big Brother because Montero sounds like Mong Tai Lo, and Mong means to look like to. To look upon Big Brother, yeah. and in many ways, you really are that Big Brother figure to me and to to many people in the yeah. scene, right? But we well, I studied classical piano for eight years, but six years into that, when I was fourteen, nineteen seventy-four. I started to get very interested in jazz. My dad was a jazz guitarist. Uh, he used to be a policeman, but he used to moonlight doing uh, jazz gigs as well as Hawaiian guitar gigs. And so, and he had many, many jazz records at home. So, I, I actually had a lot of uh, jazz records uh, in my collection, in, in at home, being played all the time. So, I started to really like jazz uh, six years into my classical music training. Important performances of my life which really helped to change my life was playing on the main stage of the Montreux Jazz Festival uh, in Switzerland in 1988. Because suddenly, uh, not just the festival where there were 3,500 people watching, but it was telecast live all over Europe. So that was the first. And then later on, it was part of a TV program that was shown all over the world, PBS in the US and in, in Australia, in the UK. I don't think I became like a phenomenon or a big star, but I, I no longer was a stranger in the scene. I originally had an idea more than 12 years ago to start a Singapore jazz orchestra. It fizzled out because I couldn't really find the funding even to do it on a semi-professional basis. So a few years later, I decided why not not just set up an orchestra, set up a, an organization that would have the orchestra, but also would act as a crucible for public education in jazz, to grow the audience, to increase the level of excellence, to work with youth. Uh, to bring them to a higher level. So then it integrates both uh, our art making with our community, community mindedness and, and try to be useful within the scene. Jazz, in a sense, is, although it can be entertaining, it's not entertainment. Jazz is an art form. Singapore sound in, with our ethnic instruments should both exist and we should not disown one or the other. Yeah. And I think for yeah. me, the aspiration is someday if we hear um, you know, a jazz band playing, let's say on Spotify, I'll be able to go like, hey, I think that's a Singaporean jazz band without hearing the language, yeah. without hearing the specific instrumentation. Like something in the style of playing might indicate that this came from our region, yeah, for example. Yeah. So you're right, there is no pure jazz. You know, the good thing about jazz is really about improvisation. It promotes heuristic or lateral thinking. And, and it, it, it actually opens up when you learn how to play jazz and have to uh, work things out so that it'll... It's an instant composition in a sense, right? Yeah. So basically, it will open up and fire out synapses in your brain, which I think are, may not have existed beforehand, right? And when you develop, whether you end up becoming a jazz musician or not, if you study jazz and play it as a hobby or study it in school even, uh, thankfully now jazz is an O-level and A-level yes. subject, uh, uh, elective program. And so basically, if, if you study this, then you become a very good troubleshooter and you become very adaptable, you become very resilient. Uh, because life is always about, so you could be on a high and some negative thing will happen, how do you react, right? Or you mm. could be on a low and then some, uh, some positive happens, thing happens. Yeah. And so then you, how do you deal with the things that happen to you? And yeah. I think jazz really prepares us for that. When I got to sing China, I was in a really good place in my life. I think I was finally um, able to be myself or more myself. I think even now I struggle being myself. Yeah. So Sing China because, you know, mega star Jay Chow pressed the buzzer for me. That gave me validation. Um, it also kind of brought me into like the public 
uh, spotlight both in China and in Singapore and particularly in Singapore that attention was very helpful in my career. After I came back, I had all these ex exposure and all these opportunities that I previously never had even though I had been working for so long. I really have to thank all the veterans um, in, in the music scene, in the jazz music scene because that's how we grew. We just grew by playing with them, by listening as much as we can, observing them. And I had so many great musicians who were so kind to me in many ways. To be honest, I, I didn't really set out to be an ambassador for jazz music, right? I chose to sing jazz as a genre at the competition in China because A, it was what differentiated me from the other contestants, but B, of course, it's what I love, so I chose to do it. But I think because of that, I became associated with um, jazz music, especially in the Chinese-speaking circles. I think that was when I realized, oh, I have, I have influence. I, there's something that I can do. And then I began to see myself as an ambassador for um, promoting jazz to a wider audience. I have to tell you this anecdote. My mom has a nickname for you. It's really? in Cantonese. She calls you Mong Tai Lo. Which <laughs> Tai Lo in Cantonese is Big Brother because Montero sounds like Mong Tai Lo. And Mong means to look, like to, to look upon Big Brother. Yeah. And in many ways, you really are that Big Brother figure to me and to, to many people in the yeah. scene, right? So whenever she says, Oh, you know, no, did you, I saw that you uh, did a show with Mong Tai Lo recently. I always think it's adorable. I've been oh, meaning lovely. to tell you. Yeah. I really think like this evolutionary mode, you know, is, is intrinsic to jazz. It's like really survival of the fittest yeah. and survival of the people who are the most ready to change. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what jazz has done for me. Because when I was a kid, I was very rule abiding, right? Kwai kwai, you know, always follow all the rules. But when I came to jazz, it was exciting and it captivated me because Yes, there are some rules, there's the harmony, you know, there's the rhythm, you know, the, the, the main melody. But most of it was about how can you subvert the rules and still play well with others. It's not like you just do your own thing, that's just chaos and mayhem. But it's about how can we play colour outside the lines but still make a picture that looks good. The thing that I do believe is that, you know, although artists will say that we are creative, I think everyone is creative. Yeah. And, and it's just only whether we can awaken that creativity and heighten it and bring all the other things that come along with being creative which is empathy and uh, understanding and, and, and of other people. For me, uh, when people learn music, I'm, I'm very, very happy because it means that more and more people will start to be able to speak in this common ground of music, whether it be jazz or, or jazz in particular because we are jazz musicians, right? Yeah. But I 